Welcome to the second episode of Frozen Bites, the Frozen Arc podcast. I'm your host for today. My name is Rianne, and I'm joined by Claire. If you haven't already listened to our introductory episode, you can find it on our YouTube channel. The first episode explored the origins of the Frozen Arc and explained how biobanking can contribute to conservation and research. However, today we are going to explore the virtual arc. This is an amazing collaborative project between visual artist Paul Evans, writer and illustrator Rowena Somerville, the Frozen Arc Biobank, the Our Big Picture, and Human Studio. You're probably wondering what the Virtual Arc project actually is. Well, this is a scheme which is delivering a variety of different creative workshops where participants can create a virtual gene bank for endangered species. The amazing models, drawings and poetry from these workshops will then be converted into a virtual reality arc through Human VR's Sheffield-based studio. This wonderful project has been made possible through funding from the Arts Council England and the Wellcome Trust. The aim of this is to raise awareness about biodiversity loss and extinction and to educate people about how they can help to protect vulnerable species from extinction. In order to explain these ideas further, today we have the incredible opportunity to interview the two key people behind the Virtual Arc project, Paul Evans and Rowena Somerville. Firstly, we will be speaking to Paul Evans, who is the artist behind the Virtual Arc project. It's fantastic to have you here today. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. Could you please explain your background as an artist? Well, I've always made drawings ever since I was, um, I think probably, uh, I've, I've been drawing for as long as I've been able to walk, really, uh, since as soon as I could hold a pencil, I was making drawings. And uh, I had something of a disrupted childhood. So um, I think I, I escaped into drawing um, quite, quite a bit, really. I, think I escaped into the world of my imagination, which I could express on paper, you know, kind of bring it out of my head. On, on, onto onto paper um, and uh, yeah yeah I was quite obsessed with it as a kid really um, but I didn't really go straight into art um, not straight into art education uh, I actually did philosophy in the early 80s that was what kind of brought me to Sheffield where, where I still live um, decades on um, I came to art after finishing my philosophy degree um, some years later, um, as a result of getting into comics, comics with a capital X, um, the new wave of graphic novels that was kind of emerging at that time, and that interest in, in comics and drawing comics um, led to time spent in, in the life drawing class at Museum Sheffield, uh, drawing from the figure, uh, which is really the best way to learn to draw. Uh, I can't recommend that enough. Anyway, in, in, in the life drawing class, I got noticed by my tutor, uh, Robert Clark, who used to write the, um, the Guardian, um, the art pages in, in the Guardian preview. Um, and Bob was uh, very, very helpful and supportive. And he, and he liked my approach to drawing and suggested that I do an art degree, which I did. I uh, spent three years doing that. It was fantastic. Uh, some of the best years of my life. Um, and then when I finished, um, actually, I didn't go straight into a career as an artist. Um, that was postponed still because um, I went into graphic design. Um, I'd been doing some work as an illustrator, and that kind of led into doing um, bits of graphic design work. And then I kind of started a company with uh, two, two friends working from um, work, working from the, the spare bedroom. Um, and uh, that kind of grew into a proper company, you know, with eight employees. And I, and I was the creative director of that company for about 10 years um, before, uh, well, I found that I was in a kind of bit of a middle position, really. I, I was sort of working in between the uh, the clients and the designers and not doing so much actual creative work of my own. So I felt I needed independence and I wanted to start my own art career. Um, which, which I did after leaving, after leaving Virtual Graphics, the, the, the design company. Um, 
and then uh yeah and then uh yeah things uh things kind of grew and um and developed and uh took various paths through painting drawing and those sort of things until about 10 years ago um i worked on a fantastic project with mike bruford from 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 the frozen Ark, um jackie morville um from the archaeology department at cardiff university and uh the National Museum of Wales. The project was called Future Animals. And it was fantastic. We worked with a number of schools from South Wales, imagining animals of the future and how, um, if you like, how um, uh, we might take an animal that's currently not used for a particular purpose and adapt it to a purpose. So we might take a budgie, a pet budgie, and turn it into a guard budgie. Or we might uh, take a, um, a boa constrictor and give it feathers and it becomes a kind of feather boa that we can wear for, yeah, for fashion purposes. Anyway, it's a fun project and it had some great, um, great outputs, including an exhibition of the, of the young people's work at National Museum Wales. And since then, I've worked with uh, universities around the country um, on uh, what you might call creative public engagement, all sorts of different projects. Well, it seems like you've had quite a varied background before you became an artist. When did your interest in wildlife and protecting endangered species begin? Yeah, well, I've been kind of engaged with um, wildlife conservation um, for as long as I can remember. Um, I've always been excited by by the wonder and beauty of the natural world. And I guess in the 70s, um, we were starting to sort of really see the impact of um, uh, what, what, well, really human action on, 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 on species loss and things like that. I mean, I mean, the, the big thing then was, was, was save the whale. Um, and I was very concerned about that. Um, I mean, I've, I've grow, grown up on um, watching wildlife on the television. David Attenborough, even uh, Animal Magic. I'm not sure that any of your listeners will, will remember that, but it was a it was a great program. Check it out on uh, Google it, Google it. Animal Magic, Johnny Morris, Google it. Yeah. So so watching the television was quite important, really, and and watching those nature programs, um, it, it kind of got me very excited about, um, as I say, the the, the, the beauty and, and the strangeness and the wonder of the natural world. And I became active, I guess, around the age of 17, when I helped set up <clears throat> a branch of Friends of the Earth in, in Walsall. And then in the mid-1980s, when I'd moved to Sheffield, I got involved in a number of direct actions for Greenpeace with um, Joe Simpson of Touching the Void fame. Uh, we abseiled off Clifton Suspension Bridge to try and draw attention to um, uh, pollution in rivers and uh, we climbed a chimney at a big power point power plant in, in, in Yorkshire to draw attention to acid rain and uh, yeah I've, I've, I've been as active as I can in uh, wildlife conservation um, in initiatives uh, since then. It's nice to hear that you have always had an interest in the environment and have been active throughout your lifetime. Was there anything in particular which inspired the idea of creating a virtual ark? So the inspiration, I guess, uh, it was there in the name of the frozen ark. It was, it was, it was there in that, yeah, that that there in there in the title of the, of the frozen ark. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of work with virtual reality, um, VR, um, what, what I guess what's called XR now. The the, the name keeps changing. Um, Doing work with a graphic design company called Human in Sheffield, and um, one of the projects that we'd done with Human was a virtual gallery project with uh, South York school children. This is called the Virtual Social Science Gallery, and uh, in a way, like I could kind of put the two and two together. The idea of if you if you imagine kind of walking around the inside of an ark, and uh, there might be uh, various cabins, if you like, with these different animals in that might have 
contain environments for these animals. I thought, well, that could be quite an extraordinary and fantastic thing. So really it was a case of just putting those two ideas together, the idea of virtual reality and uh, what a virtual reality experience can be um, as, an, as, a, as, a, as a thing that you might be able to explore and um, uh, enter and become part of. And uh, the idea of an arc as a, um, yeah, as a, as a boat, really, um, that we can use to kind of preserve species and uh, sail off into a brighter future. That's really interesting. It's great to hear where the idea came from. What have you found most enjoyable about the virtual art creative workshops? It's been an absolute pleasure working with Mafalda and other members of the Rose and Art team. They're, they're a fantastic um, young international group of dedicated professionals. There's something quite utopian about it. The fact that all these nationalities are coming together to, to solve this to solve this problem. And it's not only the amazing knowledge of, um, of the researchers, it's the investment of feeling, really. You know, it's, it's, it's the love for the... Um, for the animals that they're researching, and um, yeah, I mean, I mean, working with with the researchers has, has meant a huge amount to me. It's been a dream job, really. You know, ever since I was young, as I say, I've had this fascination for um, for, for, the, for, for the zoological world, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's 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 a dream job. Also, seeing the beautiful colourful models that the young people have been making, reading the uh, the fantastic poems that the researchers have written. Um, again, you know, you know, there's these wonderfully emotional things, really. You know, there's a real hit in the poems. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I didn't expect, and it was one of the best things about being involved in the workshops, uh, the Zoom workshops, was um, the response, really, from the young people when... Um, when, when the workshops are finished, when, when you're saying goodbye, when, when they hold their animals up. And uh, it's almost like you've, um, you've spent real quality time with them. And um, it's just that openness, really. I mean, it, it's really, you know, it, it, it really hits you in, in, in the heart. And it's a privilege to be working on this, on this project. It's so fantastic that it's a dream job to you. It has been really inspirational work. What are the main aims that you're hoping to achieve from the Virtual Arc project? Um, emotion, yeah. Uh, the, the, the main aim is to create an emo emotional connections um, and, and share the knowledge of these different forms of life. Um, even, even if you look at the gallery on the website, um, you know, you, 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 when, when you see these beautiful colourful models it, 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 it again you, you have this it really hits you you know you know, you know, you know. Um, and I think the fact that they've been made by hand that that, that kind of hands-on quality that tactile quality um, uh, they're, they're kind of unique you know and they're, 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 uh, they're the product of uh, thought and time spent thinking about about these creatures um, yeah they're they're quite powerful things, those little models. And the poems as well have a really powerful, direct emotional impact. So um, I want people to feel emotionally affected by the arc. Um, that emotion hopefully will lead to positive action, which I know is ambitious. But I feel the more that people are involved, the, the more the arc is for them and about them. And, and their their feelings about um, these animal species that we're losing, uh, I think the stronger it will be. So please visit our Facebook page um, at the Virtual Arc um, and contribute your own animal sculptures or model or, or write a synchronic poem. It's, it's really very easy and it's really good fun, and it's surprising um, how a few words can like create a real parcel of emotion. In the end, I kind of think the animals might save us, you know. Um, animals are kind of emblems of a fragile, threatened planet. Um, they're also 
the inhabitants of the beautiful forests, tundras, coral reefs, um, the, the, the sublimely beautiful environments that we're losing. Um, and I think that acting as emblems and acting as our representatives of these environments, I think they're going to save us. Um, of course, it's, it's sad. We shouldn't really need an ark, but we do need one. And um, I hope that when you visit the finished virtual arc, the artwork that's going to emerge from all of this activity and creativity, you'll enjoy it and it will give you um, a reason for um, being involved in the preservation of the species that we're currently losing. That is a lovely aim. It really is so important to create strong emotions for the work that's being done. Next, we will introduce Rowena Somerville, a writer who is collaborating with the Virtual Arc Project. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Frozen Bites podcast. Firstly, could you please explain your background as a writer? Uh, I went to art school um, and trained as an illustrator, which really means pictures that go with words. But I never quite thought of doing the words myself until a bit later I had children. I read them lots of children's books. I thought, I could do that. And, you know, after a lot of uh, struggle and stress, I eventually could. So I had a number of children's books published. And uh, the writing became kind of predominant, really, and I wrote things for elsewhere. Um, it's always been poetry with me rather than stories or novels. Um, I now write poems and pictures, draw pictures sometimes for adults. Uh, I'm a big fan of graphic novels as well, though I haven't quite attempted one of those. Um, I often teach people well you know support people to write poetry which could be people who are well used to writing or people who've never written anything before um and i write and i write predominantly i guess poetry for adults now um but through virtual arc i think i'm writing for younger people as well and i also um write and write the music for songs, uh, which I perform with an a cappella band called Penwen that I've sung in and with for mm, 25 years or so now. So quite a lot of uh, writing. And I would say one of the key things for writing well is to read a lot. It sounds like you have had a really interesting journey into writing. Thank you for sharing it. What led to your involvement in the Virtual Arc project? I first became involved with Frozen Arc about three years ago when, uh, to my complete astonishment and delight, I was uh, contacted by a young woman called Josie Jackson asking permission to use one of my poems um, that she had actually read as a young girl uh, for her to use it in the introduction to her doctoral thesis. I mean, you know, imagine the uh, the prestige and the joy of that. Um, that particular poem had been written as a rap, um, as a silverfish. I must have read somewhere that silverfish evolved, uh, you know, forgive my lack of science, but relatively early on in um, the, the sort of profile of the fauna that we have now and because of their simplicity I guess and because of their adaptability uh, they didn't kind of refine or uh, go through evolutionary changes much um, thereafter though other animals did uh, uh, because they kind of worked everywhere and so I imagined the silverfish sitting in a cupboard being very bored and envying other animals that were, you know, growing knees or learning to fly or whatever. And um, Josie, who is an alumna of uh, Frozen Arc, 
um, had obviously read this, I think, when she was about nine or ten. She obviously had all the interest going, um, but this poem particularly uh, piqued that, added to that, and it sort of stayed with her. It gave her a bit of an understanding of what evolution might be. And, you know, I'm not claiming cell responsibility, but she went on uh, to do a PhD in evolutionary science and to do a placement with Frozen Ark. So that was about three years ago. I wanted to kind of build on that relationship. I was very interested in Frozen Ark and, you know, found them to be uh, delightful people. Um, and a couple of things kind of didn't quite work out. And then I was put in touch with Paul Evans, uh, the visual artist in Sheffield, who were all, who was already working with Frozen Ark and uh, we corresponded and he had the idea already for Virtual Ark. We, uh, Paul and I have never actually met, um, but we've spoken a lot and we've seen each other a lot on screen and have ended up working, um, I think, very productively together. That's brilliant. We're so glad you've become a part of the Virtual Ark project. What role do you think creativity and writing can play in promoting the protection of biodiversity and the environment? I think that sort of creativity, the arts in general, um, work in sort of broadly three ways um, to promote the protection of biodiversity. I think um, for a start, not everyone responds well to uh, sort of scientifically worded or based um, promotion of those kinds of concerns. And uh, we know the hugeness of the effect the Attenborough programs can have on public understanding and public engagement. And I think visual arts, creative writing, song, everything um, can do a similar thing. It can kind of touch people's hearts, pique their concern. Uh, I think that's great. Um, I think um, taking part in writing or creative arts based on these kinds of concerns is also fantastic for people. And I think for for people who are already zoologists or working in that field it can also add to their tools and add to their enjoyment and they already have a sense of wonder but it's good to be able to express that um, and I think for uh, the more general public um, when you get them thinking about uh, an animal that that they really love and instinctively are concerned for, cared for, find beautiful, you know, whatever it is they like about it. For them to create an artwork in response to that or to write a, a poem, it, it really kind of enhances that engagement and it's more likely to make them uh, really care um, and find out what things can be done to, to help the situation of, of animals in difficulty so I think that's crucial um, and I think you know the science and the arts working together in the third way is is a way for humanity to express itself and to say you know hang on we don't want the world and the planet to go this way we actually care about this and we all have a stake in it so um, that's what I think and hope that we can do. Absolutely. It is so important to consider endangered species from so many different viewpoints to help us get the best understanding. Do you have any future plans for writing workshops with the Virtual Arc? Uh, the answer is yes, but not a lot more. Um, the amount of funding we were able to raise in uh, the first instance, that's Paul Evans and myself, obviously only goes so far. And with the best will in the world, there's a point at which we have to say, that's wonderful. On this current funding, I can't go any further. So I have, I'm hoping to do 
um, some creative writing with uh, people in Lincolnshire who are affiliated to an arts organisation called Our Big Picture. And I'm also hoping, uh, slightly closer to home for me, to do a writing workshop um, with members of the Whitby Naturalist Society. Um, now, of course, since we've had the funding for this pilot version of virtual arc uh, we've all been living with covid and lockdown so all of our outreach has 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 had to be done remotely and that's really it's very hard and it's very limiting um i'm a person who has done a, a lot of workshops and i do enjoy very much working with people and supporting them to produce and create things they kind of never thought they would and then to get all excited about it and be ambitious for themselves and make things better and all of that I love to do it and you simply can't do it in the same way um, over zoom however good zoom is anyway so so that's by the by but yeah so I've got a couple more workshops to come um, and then that's it for now what we very much hope is that this version of the virtual art, this is the start of it, it's a pilot, and we hope to go with Frozen Arc for further funding so that we can make of the virtual arc uh, a simply stunning, beautiful, wonderful, big thing that lots of people get the chance to interact with and to nominate their own chosen creatures into um, doing that creatively so down the line a bit I hope there will be lots more and lots more opportunity for people to take part in these kinds of activities but for now in this very first instalment um, the work on virtual arc is uh, almost through actually. Those sound like some fantastic plans we really hope to continue some more work with you soon. What have you found most enjoyable about the virtual art creative workshops? I've done uh, creative writing workshops and a little bit of uh, creative arts to support them as well, just to say that. Um, I think my favourite aspect of it is what it always is, is to to be able to support other people's enthusiasm um, in this case, there's enthusiasm for the cause of endangered species and for engaging with that, but also to see people, um, you know, turning on to their own creativity, to their own imagination, to their own skill in using words to, uh, in some cases, to find that they can do it at all. In some cases, people are, you know, academically and scientifically able with words, but maybe haven't um, worked imaginatively uh, before. And in some people, they can, they know they can do that. But here is a chance to to use a skill um, bent towards a particular end, um, something for the virtual arc, and and so. It's absolutely great to see enthusiasm, learning, skill, craft, all of those things being used. Um, and for the people, all of them really caring about the animals that they're writing about. Um, and as I say, caring about them, they already do, but not just sort of scientifically or factually, actually really thinking about the qualities and the life of those creatures and celebrating them. So those two things coming together has been an absolute joy to see. And, you know, let's hope down the line we can make Virtual Arc even bigger and better and it will have wonderful artworks and wonderful pieces of writing in it by hundreds and hundreds of people. It will be great. It's so lovely to hear that you've enjoyed the project so much. So, that is the end of today's episode. We really hope that you've enjoyed listening and have learned something new. Please subscribe to our account to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>